So what this means, we are going to explain that through our presentation. So what is architecture and what is expression? So architecture generally is quite a profession in which buildings are built, in which uh, the buildings in which people live, people spend their time, the views of functionalities. But apart from that, architecture throughout time has been a very strong symbol of expression. People have used it to express power, to express dominance, to express strength, to express welcomings. And all this happened in the classic age. We call this classicism. In classic age, buildings stood when they stood on the uh, when they stood on the soil, they showed us an image of reaching out to heaven. They showed us an image of reaching out to people. They showed us an image of reaching out to society. And through the end, as we move through the end of the presentation, we will show you how the modern banks have used this to actually create a power, a governmentality in which all of us are today, and we use an banking solution. So, this pic is of the museum at Stockholm. Now, this is situated in an island in Stockholm. And this island has a history of having navy drill walls. Long navy drill walls, just like the structure that you can see here. So, inside this, there are bookstores, there are restaurants, there are cafes, and whatnot. But, the basic structure of the building is like a long drill wall. And the architect, the architect actually chose to have a building which actually represents the history of the place rather than something new and something special. On the right side, you actually see a uh, building from Italy, uh, Bilbao. This is the Guggenheim Museum. And this building is very famous internationally for, uh, for the organic structure that it has. And it looks like a very superficial uh, building. It looks like something out of a uh, cipher movie. So both have the same purpose, both serve the same purpose, both are museums. But this building tried to actually incorporate the culture of the place that it is in. That building tried to show some, something that is beyond reality, that is something exotic. So what we are trying to show here is how the same functionality, the building with the same functionality, can be used to represent two different lines of thought. <coughs> We will be defining our architecture as uh, as consisting of three uh, three types: uh, the function, structure, and art. Uh, coming to the structure part, so uh, throughout history, domes and arches have been used very effectively to show a uh, feeling of dominance, a feeling of spaciousness. Uh, this is the Rome span here. You can see the dome on the back side. So if you go inside. When you see the very structure of the door, you see the vast space that is there and you feel overhead. So they create a feeling in you that uh, inspiration and awe, uh, veneration. So that is what they want, so that they actually make you feel that uh, there is something awesome. That is the capital, uh, capital building of the US and that is directly derived from this building. And, uh, Coming to this very building, so in Stockholm, uh, when you go to the city centre, you see a building which is just a tall structure of uh, uh, tall structure of glass. You see, you see it blocking the blocking the way perpendicularly. You don't understand what this building is and why it is blocking the way. It is a cultural house. It also again stands for all the cultural things it has. But the uh, the author when he saw when he saw this. He thought that there is nothing, uh, there's nothing uh, spectacular about this. It was when the dark winter fell that he understood its importance. During winter, this very building, uh, uh, the Swedish windows are very dark. So when the winter comes in, it actually has a glitter, has a glow. And the surrounding darkness, people from the surrounding darkness actually come to this building and it serves as a cultural hub. In the normal days, it receives, uh, all the cultural meetings receive back and uh, the building looks very normal. And during this time, you know, like, uh, during all this time, 
uh, in architecture, especially windows, roofs, uh, furnaces, columns, they all use the, being used as a, uh, ornamental expression. And especially doors, portals and gates have been used as a defining structure for banks. What they want to symbolize will be symbolized in them. So uh, in this picture, we actually have a Corinthian pillar. So in this Corinthian pillar, uh, as you can see here, these are actually petals. These are petals of the Acanthus plant. So Acanthus plant is supposed to be related to life and death. And ancient Greeks actually used these pillars for their temples. So basically they showed that from God is born the cycle of life and death. Uh, see, and you can see every column has uh, three elements. One is the pedestal, the pedestal is at the bottom. The shaft, and one is the entablature. The entablature is something that is above this. Even the structure of the entablature is defined in such a way that it has to convey a specific meaning. Uh, so basically what we are trying to say in, uh, in the presentation is first of all we will look at what the case presents, uh, we will look at the argument that it has and we will look at the examples in the case then uh, based on that we will form a framework and we will look at various handle, uh, you know examples and we will try to look at those handle examples through the framework we uh, you know, built using the knowledge we got from the case. So the case basically start, uh, talks about the uh, symbolic architecture is a ma natural expression. So uh, the essence of the case is that architecture is just uh, beyond the functional aspect is much more and it is a metaphor which conveys a lot of meanings. And that meanings are the, you know, it's a shared meaning. Like uh, a meaning, uh, if you look at a, a pillar which is lofty, then obviously it means strength. So these, these are something which are uh, you know intrinsic part of culture and using this sort of meanings they try to uh, that form the language and that language is used to communicate. So in ancient times, uh, you know earlier there was not much marketing. So for example, if you uh, think of a bank, right? So bank uses its architecture to say a lot of things about itself, the, the structure, the design that it uses. So it is in a way of uh, saying that uh, it, it was a sort of marketing. So if you look at the title we used, we, uh, we said architecture served a particular purpose which is now you know marketing, uh, which is being served by marketing right now. So it, it is pretty similar in a way that both try to communicate uh, certain messages uh, beyond the functional aspect. So uh, coming to the Renaissance, so the case uh, talks about uh, how architecture uh, uh, expresses and its various meanings and how it changes from antiquity to uh, Greek Roman culture and uh, to Renaissance. So uh, the important aspect of Renaissance was that uh, earlier uh, this uh, expression or the language of architecture was solely used to depict something, say a temple. A temple is something which is sacred and uh, to show that it was sacred it was different and people, uh, uh, the situation and behavior expected inside the temple was different from the normal uh, other place. They sort of incorporated all that in the architecture of the temple itself. So everything involved. Uh, and uh, the architecture in a way it had uh, that various elements and they formed the proper uh, uh, science or uh, method of doing things. So in the nice sense it changed in, in, in a manner that now it was not just restricted to the temples as such but now people, uh, the people the rich or the bourgeoisie uh, started using that uh, to have a cultural capital. So they started now everything, uh, the public places and all of them uh, started using uh, the, the knowledge, the language of architecture to portray things, things beyond the, the usual, you know, sense of security, stability of the structure. So it, it portrayed the, you know, nature of the person, uh, the owner of the building or many other things. It, it was a medium to showcase his own self, uh, portray self. So, <coughs> So uh, earlier uh, the classical architecture was very austere and uh, yeah. so Renaissance brought in complexity and uh, so it uh, 
So now coming to uh, new world, uh, the case talks about banking as such. So uh, banking has its roots in Renaissance. So it all started in Italy, the crude uh, banks with the, that was started. And uh, slowly they picked up and they formed into proper organizations. So if you observe, most of the banks usually use uh, uh, an architecture which is drawn from the ancient architecture. The reason they do that is, so banks are places that people go to uh, deposit their money. So they have to give them a feeling of security, stability and you know, strength. So that is incorporated in the structure. So say, we already know of the ancient structures to have this, this qualities. So banks, uh, in order to, especially in the United States, they all replicated the ancient architecture so that they portray uh, all these things and they, it sort of markets uh, all these qualities about the bank. So uh, from, from the temples to the temples of finance. Okay. Now as I said, banks, uh, the reason for uh, using architectural language was to showcase stability, strength and security. But uh, with the advent of e-commerce, there was another thing which was added, which was speed. Now speed uh, changed situations uh, uh, a little, but it did not per se impact the original stability and security. Uh, so what happened was now uh, with the e-commerce, we didn't have the architecture, the physical presence was depicted a lot, which said so much about the institution or the company. Now we didn't have that, we just had a, now we had just have a web page. So all the three dimensional complex expression is now, you know, force fit into the two dimensional web page. Now this web page has to do what it did. And it, it's not easy, you know, replicating the effect of walking into a structure and getting the feel of the mood and uh, to the lighting and everything. But they try to inculcate this by using the images of the ancient architecture. They use these images and they put the images in the websites. For example, on the uh, banking website, choose the images of the, you know, the first bank, uh, banks or the you know, Federal Reserve pictures, which to show that they are pretty old. Uh, it, it sort of uh, gives them this flexibility that they say that they are uh, modern and uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, they have everything related to the uh, you know, technology, but they also have the uh, you know, uh, best best part of the ancient world. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, now with the advent of e-banking, the corporate communication has changed. Uh, not just solely uh, in, instead of the physical structure, uh, it is advertisements, uh, AD machines, and internet sites which convey the same thing which architecture used to. Okay, uh, now uh, let's look at the uh, few marketing campaigns which you mentioned in the case. For example, Merrill Lynch, we all know Merrill Lynch. So, a, a uh, user, a particular ad, there was this uh, time when uh, the financial sector was being regulated and for, to depict that or to uh, showcase that, they, they created the ad where they use the elements of the classical architecture and uh, they sort of uh, created a very you know, illogical uh, uh, putting together of things which, which look illogical at, uh, at first look but they make sense when you uh, uh, look at it properly. So uh, they, they use the elements of classical architecture, the pillars, the columns and they use the amphitheater. They wanted to uh, showcase that uh, the freeing up of the financial institution or the uh, this thing. So amphitheater is a place where people usually express freely. So they wanted to portray that. So that is how they they, they use the ancient uh, you know, elements of uh, architecture. And uh, same thing is used in uh, Boston Bank ad, uh, Chase Bank ad, and even in Zap and National ad. They all use the column uh, in a way to uh, you know say things about their bank. And uh, about using this architecture in the modern marketing. So, University of Rhode Island, uh, 
it actually generally in US uh, the, the universities have these uh, image of uh, like uh, the campus is just there being there for fun you know being there near the beaches where you know people actually have fun which is promoted by movies like the high school movies that uh, the previous book talked about so uh, university of Rhode Island what they thought was uh, they renamed the logo they used this uh, this logo this new logo now people thought that this is some ancient structure which is there in the logos like anything but it actually was a real uh, real building from their own campus this is green hall the green hall and this is uh, this near the entrance of Rhode Island so they actually incorporated this when people started observing it more attention was there to the Rhode Island uh, more attention was there to the building of uh, green hall now this green hall is supposedly the most formal building it's supposedly the most uh, uh, you know the building which has uh, derived right uh, directly from ancient architecture so uh, in order to show that their institute is very formal for the admission purposes, they started using this building. So when the students actually came for the admission, they used to go directly to this building. So an order was created to the parents and all the other other parties that okay, this institute is there for formal education rather than all the fun that is supposed to be there in the head. Uh, this was the first instance where such uh, where a building was directly used. For so now that we have established that architecture is not just about uh, structural, functional and uh, aesthetic uh, meaning, uh, architecture is more about marketing. So architecture tells about the organizational core values, uh, the core value proposition, the uh, cultural mindset that existed and the technical understanding of people uh, during that. This reminds me of a very historically very famous fictional example from the book uh, founded by Andra. There is Howard Noir who is a uh, completely written. In those days it was believed that the structure has to be as horizontal as possible and as less vertical as possible. So the ratio has to be between them. But Howard Noir uh, goes on to believe that he is basically an architect but then he studies civil engineering also and he goes on to uh, post and against the entire world saying that uh, a structure could be vertical also and the book ends with uh, him checking uh, this price so, in the late 20th century, there was this huge rampant digital revolution that was happening. Uh, as Jayesh already mentioned, uh, brick and mortar sites were being converted to uh, company commerce sites, and then architecture in its three dimensional form also got transformed into a two dimensional uh, representation. That's how it was being used. So, so much about the theory. Uh, author also told about this important core values in security, stability and strength. Uh, so it is logical and goes without me saying that if a company, if a brand or if an industry has to position itself based on these core values, so they have to use architecture in their logos. So let's see how it goes. Uh, Los Angeles Police Department in a pretty also known as, uh, uh, is known for the security of the civilian population. Uh, it is its responsibility to take, take care of the civilians. So it uses that particular robot which there is a horizontal structure and, and it between that there is a vertical uh, uh, structure like that. Vertical structure as it is mentioned in the text says that it is the typical form of structure of the church. Wherein church man goes to you know pray for God. So churches are typically built in a vertical fashion so that man is trying to reach up to the uh, uh, trying to reach God. So this kind of says that you know uh, uh, the civilians are taken care of by a godly presence, by an almighty presence. So uh, that is why they are called this kind of thing. Now cement and steel industry. One of the core functional values of a cement or steel company is that they have to provide strength in their building. There are other factors also like uh, curing time etc. But the most important uh, value proposition is that there is strength. So all of the cement companies you can see uh, uh, have a logo which has a structure basically. Uh, Malapal cement, 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 cement. So this kind of, uh, 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 these kind of values are uh, promoted symbolically by using this kind of logo. Uh, Education institutes are known to be sacred temples of uh, uh, imparting knowledge to students. So uh, the traditional temple structure had, uh, they have their traditional uh, temple structure in the logo. So many of these scholars So every one of these scholars has actually a historical building. Uh, 
Pete Howard, uh, Howard University, Belmont University, there is a historical structure in every one of these groups. So, we have basically formulated a framework known as CRAS, uh, CRS, C stands for Clarity of Meaning Effectiveness. So, uh, uh, whenever you are using an art architectural symbol, it has to be uh, uh, visually very effective and uh, uh, attention seeking and it has to be effective in terms of its meaning. Now, relevance. Relevance in the text he talks about a word bank example, where word bank outrightly rejects uh, a classical structure for the building, saying that uh, the main uh, function of word bank is to give funds to uh, third world countries, whereas classicism is uh, uh, related to colonialism. So, because colonialism indirectly affect, directly affected third world countries, they outrightly rejected a classical structure. So basically it has to be relevant. Alignment with its core principles. I have already told you about the cement and steel industry example. Uh, the, uh, the, strength, the value of strength is being evicted to the logos. Shared meaning, equipment and meaning. Now, what this means is that uh, the, the message that you are conveying should be uh, common, between, common between the advertisers and the consumers. So, uh, so, so the meaning that has, the meaning that they want to convey should be properly understood by the uh, consumers also. The community should be Okay, as we uh, talk about e-commerce, now uh, as we see in the example of banks, when banks went, uh, you know, uh, online, uh, the websites incorporated the pictures of banks. So that it, it uh, still the architecture which was missing, uh, so also the message it conveyed was missing. So they try to include that. For example, uh, any major bank has a you know picture in the background uh, of, of the structure. So what we thought was e-commerce. Uh, you all know what are the advantages of e-commerce, like uh, the, the various advantage of variety and all. And you also know what are the advantages of brick and mortar uh, shops. So we thought uh, usually uh, the major problem that people encounter by dealing with e-commerce is security, lack of trust, and everything which is incorporated in the fiscal structure, the fiscal brick and mortar shop. So we thought there's a great scope for e-commerce websites to inculcate uh, you know architectural aspects just like the banks did by putting in pictures or uh, or using symbols. They can incorporate the architectural uh, aspects of a proper brick and mortar uh, shop so that they can subconsciously you know, throw in grass uh, and various aspects, good aspects of the, the physical source. Just before moving to uh, the example, uh, we always, even you know, in this age of virtualization, if an organization has to state a point, they always use do it with physical symbols which are which are there in the history. Suppose all of your mobiles, be it any model, just go to the menu, go to the settings and just tell me what the logo is. The logo is actually a gear, the icon is a gear. So however virtualization happen, be it Google, be it anywhere throughout the web, for settings always a gear is used. So the physical meaning is intended to be more powerful always than what a uh, rather a flashy meaning or anything. So moving on. Amazon is a very popular e-commerce site. So, like we have already discussed about the trust factor. So, you don't see any kind of trust that is incorporated in this logo. But we have slightly modified it to, you know, uh, convey this meaning in a better way. It's just an attack. So, uh, the, the initial part that is there is a symbolic of it, and also symbolically represents a physical structure or an architectural structure. Uh, and, uh, uh, that is in great big trust. For whatever it is in architecture section, when I saw it, I thought it is a pile of goods which are actually waiting there to be, you know, to be shopped. So, you know, when actually something physical comes in, there is the notion that, okay, it is something that is, that is, a, that is the right place to actually you know, buy something. Uh, 1.30 regular evening.